Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for NBA, DFS, and prize fix content. All these videos, they get posted on this subreddit. I'll just have a link to this down below. I make updates with all of the news that comes out throughout the day. You can ask me questions about the slate. I will always reply to you, um, uh, most of the times up to night slate. If you need help with that, you can talk strategy here, all that good stuff. I'll have this link down below. And if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can get a hold of me on Twitter right there. All right, as far as my lineup tonight, um, you guys know I don't sweat stuff, so I will not be having it up, but I can tell you my lineup because I think I'll cash. We'll see. Um, but uh, my lineup tonight was Victor Wamanyama, Anthony Davis, uh, Jordan Awara, James Wiseman, Freeman Liberty, Bruce Brown. Missing two more. Who are the other two? Who are the other two? Let me just look at the core. I'm just missing someone in the core. Oh, Gigi Jackson and Peyton Pritchard. God, the most obvious one, Peyton Pritchard. Um, so we'll see how it does. I mean, Victor, he absolutely nuked the slate. I'll just recap in the video um, tomorrow. Hope you guys had a good night tonight. And if you play Taurus Maxi again, um, like I did on night slate, I, I put him in every single lineup, just the worst first half, just unbelievable stuff there. Also have his over fantasy score, just crazy. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, let's go over the slate. Sacramento at Orlando. Not a good spot here for Sacramento, but we still have Kevin Herter. We'll remain out here, um, and we have Trey Lyles still out. So you're going to get more minutes for this grouping of like Keon Ellis, Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray, Malik Monk. Um, they dusted off some Kessler Edwards last game. Um, Chris Duarte, I believe, they even dusted off a little bit. I, I, I don't know what that rotation was up against. I believe it was the Wizards. Yeah, right. I, I, I don't know what they were doing there. Um, Keegan Murray was losing some minutes. Um, you know, the minutes weren't great on anyone outside of like Malik Monk, De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Bonus. Um, but with that being said, with Herder out, with Trey Lyles out, you should, should see more minutes for that grouping of Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes. You're going to get Keon Ellis in the starting lineup. With that being said, sure, if no if no more value opens up, sure, I think he's fine for value. He'll probably be low-owned because uh, he burned everyone in his chalk last game. Didn't play the fourth quarter. Did get into a bit of foul trouble as well. Um, so he'll probably be low owned. It's fine. He's not going to be productive when he's out there, but at least he's playable for um, value there. Harrison Barnes is just there for me. I think I'd rather play Dylan Brooks at a similar price point, but just there for me. Keegan Murray is a guy I'm intrigued by. He was really, really popular this game. He was a good play this game, especially up against Washington. Different matchup here. I mean, he's fine. I, I don't want to say he's like a standout play, but like fine as like a filler play for me. Malik Monk, I still do like at 6.5K. She'll play about 30 minutes, spark off the bench, really good point for a guy off the bench. Um, I would say his minutes are probably, like, he's going to play 30 probably no matter what. Um, then De'Aaron Fox, Demontis Bonus, I think are solid options. I think there's other spend-ups in the mid-range or upper echelon area I'd rather play. Like, I'd rather take the savings on, like, DeJounte Murray. I'd rather, you know, play Victor Wembanyama. Uh, eh, actually, it's very, very close. Um... You know, going down to like possibly some Boston. I think the Houston guys look good. I think this slate looks better, like more of a mid range type build. Um, but we'll see. It always, you know, changes um, the next day. But yeah, Sabonis overall, not factoring in like price points, just going off fantasy score. He's going to be, you know, one of the top options, top projected options scoring wise on the slate, right? All right, moving over to Orlando. Nice spot here for Orlando. I like the price points here on um, Franz and Wendell Carter Jr. Wendell Carter Jr. at 5.3K should play low to mid-20s minutes. Good point per minute, guy. Still cheap at 5.3K. So I think it's a decent option, de decent point per dollar point per dollar option. Julian Suggs has been on a tear of late. Been playing, you know, around 30 minutes. Um, he could play a bit more if Gary Harris is out. So he'd get a bump there. But... So it's just there for me. Franz, Paolo, I think are decent options. I think I prefer Franz to Paolo. I think 6.8K just seems a little bit too cheap for him. I know he's been really, really bad of late. The minutes haven't been great on him either. 
Um, they've been involved in a ton of blowouts, but in a competitive game, I would expect at least low 30s minutes from him. I do like the spot here as well. So I like Franz here in GPPs as a bounce back candidate. Paolo is fine um, as well. And then if Gary Harris is out, you're probably going to get like an Anthony Black in the starting lineup. I don't know if I want to play Anthony Black. He's just so, so, so bad. Um, they could do other things, I guess. But the main bumps are going to be to the guards. Cole Anthony, Marco Fultz. And I would like Cole Anthony quite a bit. His minutes have been trending up of late. And if you get um, Gary Harris out, I would expect him to have to play a bit more. So if Gary Harris is out, I do like Cole Anthony. And Jonathan Isaac, I mean... He's been playing around 20 minutes. We know he's a really good point for any guy. I think he's solid for value as well. Um, just keep an eye on Gary Harris. Definitely would bump up Cole Anthony. Cole Anthony's in play regardless, but um, would like him a bit more if um, Gary Harris is up. All right, this game is juicy. Juicy, juicy. Two teams that don't play a ton of defense. Atlanta plays really, really fast. I like a decent amount in this game. Miles British, Brandon Miller. I think are both very, very solid options. Miles Britt is another guy that's been awful of late. If you want to fade because he's been bad, I have a feeling he'll probably be a bit popular tomorrow just because, you know, it's a good matchup going up against Atlanta and the price point's down. But even in blowouts, he is playing close to 40 minutes a game. You don't have to go too far back to see him just absolutely crushing. And now you're getting him at an 8.2K in a good matchup going up against Atlanta, right? And they've been involved in pretty tough matchups. Well, Orlando's tough. I mean, Phoenix is okay. Um... Did good against Memphis, did decent against Detroit, did really good up against uh, Washington. Orlando had another stinker. So, like, yeah, I really like Miles Bridges here at 8.2K going up against Atlanta. Brandon Miller, I think, is going to be a popular play tomorrow as well. But these, these two both stand out to me a lot. Man, Midgets, um, I think it's probably a bit easier to get to Midgets just due to the um, cheaper price point. But I think both are also decent point per dollar options. I think I give these slight edge to Midgets just because he's cheaper. Man does have the better eligibility. And then Nick Richards should play around 30 minutes. I think he's another good center option in the mid-range. By the fantasy point per minute guy, 5.6K. I think it's decent. Um, but definitely prefer, I think I prefer Richards to Wendell Carter Jr. If you had to ask me that. I believe Berton's got ejected last game. That's why you saw a lot more minutes for Pokashevsky. I'll not be going there. Um, Berton's large field tournament play, it's fine. Grant Williams, I think, is priced right. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if we get too much of this value. Moving on to Atlanta, so Jalen Johnson is going to be out. And we have on Yeka Kongu Doubtful. I, I, I mean, I think the guy that really stands out to me is Clint Capella at 6.4K. With no Jalen Johnson, no one Yeka Kongu. They're going to have to play him a bit more minutes. Like, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he plays 30 minutes tomorrow, maybe even a bit more. So, I really, really like Capella at 6.4K. I love DeJounte Murray at um, still sub 10K. He's still too cheap. Um, really like the game environment as well. So, I'm really, really high on Capella, really high on DeJounte. I think Bog is a solid play at 6.6K as well. He's playing big minutes. He's actually um, stuffing the statute with potential assists. It's just his teammates keep bricking shots off all of his passes. Hunter going to be asked to do a lot more. He's going to play a ton. I don't mind him. Bruno Fernando probably gets the backup five. He's firmly in play as a value piece. Vic Kreji, is, it's, he's so bad, but it's fine. Um, and then, yeah, I think Bruno is a solid value. I think he's going to have to get the backup five here. Don't know how to go to much else, but there is a lot to like in Atlanta tomorrow. Moving on to another pretty good game to target here, in my opinion. So if Quickly and Trent are in, we'll keep an eye on it if, uh, okay, it's personal. He won't be on the limit. So um, if Quickly is in, then you're going to get the normal starting lineup of, what is it, Quickly, Kelly Olenek, Gary Trent, O.J. Abaji, and I feel like Bruce Brown was coming off the bench, but you have O.J. Barrett out. Um, let me see the last game Quickly played. It's one thing I forgot to look at. 317. Let's go over this together. Let's go to the 17th. Let's go to Toronto up against Orlando. Okay, so yeah, they did do Bruce Brown off of the bench. They kept Grady Dick in the starting lineup. So with that being said, um, I, like I said, I would expect no limit, just personal. I absolutely love quickly if he plays. Kelly Olenek still think it's okay at that price point. Really good matchup up against Washington. Trent, I think it would probably be priced right with quickly back. Bruce Brown would be overpriced. The value probably be a bit overpriced if Quickly's back. I think the main really like what I really like here is Quickly. I think Kelly Olenek would be solid. The value would still be playable, like Grady Dick, OJ Abaji, um, Jonte Porter would still be in play. I wouldn't touch these other guys though. But if we get a similar situation tonight, 
that happens tomorrow, then I think there's a lot to like here. Kelly Olenek would really like. Bruce Brown, I would really like. Grady Dick would be solid. Ochi Abaji would be solid. Namor would be firmly in play for value. JFL started tonight. He would stand out as one of the better value plays on the slate. Um, what else? Ramsey will get run. He'd be in play in large field GPPs. Um, John Tay Porter at 4.68, fine. fine. Um, so yeah, if we get similar situ situation tomorrow that happens tonight, there'd definitely be a lot to like here. And then if Trent's in, but quickly is out, then I like Trent quite a bit. Bruce Ron would still be solid. Kelly Linick I would still like. And then um, JFL would uh, go back to the bench. And uh, New War would still be in play. Jonte Porter would still be in play. I probably wouldn't play Ramsey at that point, though. All right, moving on to Washington. Big news here. Keep an eye on Jordan Poole. If he is in, I mean, I like the spot here going up against Toronto. I, we do have Marvin Bagley coming back. I don't know if he'll be on some type of limit. It's his back, so I'd assume. Uh, pretty sure he was limited some. <clears throat> I feel like he came back from injury here before. I guess not. But he's been out for a while. I would, I would expect him to be on some type of limit here. So it kind of, it just, it hurts Holmes. Probably can't get the Bagley if he's on the limit. Um, what else? Um, not going to touch the value, probably. I, th I still think Kispert's solid at 5.4K. And then I like the main guys. Jordan Poole, Danny Kuzma. Just because they run a really tight rotation in a competitive game. Um, especially with the main three here. I believe Poole even played huge minutes. Yeah, 36 minutes. He just couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. But yeah, I'd be pretty high on the main three guys here. Like I said, Bagley can't get to him. I would assume he'd be on some type of limit. And then Kispert played big minutes. He'd be a solid option at 5.4K as well. If we get Jordan Poole out, that changes a lot, though, uh, depending on the starting lineup. They could do a number of things. They could just go, what, Jared Butler, Denny, Kuzma, Kispert, um, Bagley. They could do that. Um, I guess, I, I think that would be the one that would make the most sense. I guess if if that's the case, I absolutely love Jared Butler, 4.6K. Really like Denny. Really like Kuzma. Um, same thing I said about Bagley. Kispert would be very, very good. Um, and then, um, yeah, we would really, really like Jared Butler. Um, even if pulls out, he comes off the bench. Butler uh, would still be a really, really good value. Moving on to Phoenix, Nurkic is probable a good spot here. I mean, I have interest in the main three guys in such a good spot going up against the Spurs. It's just like trying to figure out which one's going to have the big game is kind of tough for me. I would say the best one to me, point per dollar, probably is Booker. I think are all decent options at their price points, but trying to figure out which one's going to have that big game it's, it's kind of tough, right? You would think they probably would need Nurkic out there going up against Wemby. It's like, it's okay at 7.3K. I'm not going to play Grayson at that price point. I know he's been on fire. I'll just let keep, people keep playing him. Um, I don't like the value here at all either. All right, moving on to the Spurs. I mean, Wemby is just phenomenal. It's back-to-back. -back. I would expect him to stay at his normal 33 minutes. Don't care. Don't care any matchup. I, I just don't want I, I He's been phenomenal. He's a lock for like 55 finish points. So Wemby looks great there. And I'm going to keep saying I like to sell every single slate. The minutes are there. He's playing close to 40 minutes game. He is going to chuck when he's out there. With the amount of minutes he's playing, even if he has, you know, not the best shooting night, his floor is still going to be pretty high just because the amount of minutes he's playing. So I still like Vassell. They refuse to move his price up. This grouping of like Trey Jones, Jeremy Sochi, and Kelvin Johnson all look pretty similar to me. Trey Jones has been the best of late. I think Sochi is probably my least favorite. And then kind of a coin flip there with Trey Jones, Kelvin. Maybe this slightly into Trey Jones. And then, uh, yeah, I don't really like any of that value. Boston, I mean, we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, they're, they're resting guys for the playoffs. Not a good spot going up against Chicago. Um, I'm sure some guys will be on the injury report tomorrow that aren't on it right now or that have the Q tags right now. So it's really, really tough to say. Um, if everyone's in, I, I don't like anything. Everyone will be overpriced. The value will be out of play. If we get same thing that happened tonight, happen tomorrow. Also, it's a back-to-back. -back. Porzingis likely candidate to sit <clears throat> as well. So they, they could do a number of things. They started Tillman tonight. But if we do get the um, same thing that happened um, tonight and it happens tomorrow, um, then obviously I'm going to absolutely love Peyton Pritchard um, with Sam Hauser's price. Sam Hauser would be in play off the bench, but probably price right. And then <clears throat> Porzingis, Derek White, Jalen Brown would all look very, very solid. Um, Tillman started. How many minutes he end with tonight? Um, pretty disappointing game from him. 20 minutes would still be a solid value. Just had a really, really bad game. And then Luke Cornette, 17. Speed played a bit. O'Shea played a bit. 
Um, and then if we get, you know, same guys out and Porzingis out, I mean, you think um, Tumble would have to play a ton or they can just go to like Luke Cornett. It's just wait and see approach here, but there's definitely going to be some value here with uh, Boston. Moving on to Chicago, so Kobe White is probably came off the bench last game. Keep an eye on that. They started Craig over him. If Craig starts, you can go there for value, but I think better value will open up. <clears throat> Don't like much here going up against Boston. I think everyone's kind of priced right, especially like, you know, the main three, and I would assume, especially Kobe White if he comes off the bench. I think Caruso is priced right. They've had guys out, so... Everyone healthy here. I don't think I like a single player on this team in a tough matchup going up against Boston. Um, if Craig starts, he is fine. But yeah, pretty disgusting. Moving on to Utah. Keep an eye on John Collins. If he's out, I would expect Walker Kessler to start again. If that's the case, I really, really like Walker Kessler. No, still no Clarkson, now no Markinen. Um If Collins is in, then you know I think Sexton, Keontae George are the guys you want to look to here. John Collins himself. Um, I think are all good options. I think Keontae George probably my favorite at 6.5K. Walker Kessler at 5.7. Uh, if Collins out and he starts, I think is a good option. Um, starting lineup should be, what, Keontae George, Colin Sexton, Taylor Hendricks, Bryce Sensbaugh, John Collins. Did I say that? One, two, three. Yeah, should be the starting lineup. So Bryce, fine value. Uh, prefer him to Hendricks, point per dollar. And then um, THT was a DMP last game. And then if Collins is out, I would expect your your seven to get the backup five. He'd actually be a decent value at 3.4K. And um, yeah, like the main guys. So uh, Dunn's been playing around 20 minutes. I think he's priced right though. And uh, yeah, just keep an eye on Collins news. That's pretty important for the Houston side. Because um, I think if Collins is out and they start Walker Kessler again, I think it's another good spot for Jock Landil. Here at 4.7k so i would be intrigued by him once again if if walker kessler does start um right you guys know it's extremely high on him here up against a bigger team in chicago so if john collins is out they do start walker kessler i am intrigued by jock lando i think brooks is a pretty good value of 4.5k utah they give up a ton of shooting that's what he's going to do he's going to go out there and chuck so yeah i'm pretty high on dylan brooks here and then i love the main guys here jalen green Fred Van Fleet, i love just be careful with Jabari Smith if they start Walker Kessler. Um, he got a massive foul trouble last game as well. Lost a bit of minutes there, but the minutes have not been great, right? Um, so, still have an interest in Jabari. And then Amon Thompson, I think, is still a bit too cheap at 6.6k. Okay, so, like him. Yeah, pretty high on the main four guys there. Intrigued by Landale. And then I really like Brooks for value. I think that's going to wrap it up for the slate. Hope you guys had a great night tonight. And I will talk to you all in the next video.